Checking, 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 testing, testing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the What Did He Said podcast. We're doing the virtual reality, pinche 360 cam, pinche live stream, pay-per-view, todo el pinche pedo. Um, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. Today I have a buddy of mine, a stand-up comedian. He's based out of San Antonio, Texas. Originally, originally from Socorro, Texas. Am I correct? Yeah, you're 100. You actually got it correct. Hey, wait. Ya me sé todo tu biography, el pinche Wikipedia, todo. It's only like two sentences. <laughs> That's it. I memorized. I think, my longer, I think my record's longer than my bio. <laughs> That's funny, dude. Yeah, the Pledge of Allegiance is longer than than than, the, <laughs> than my resume. Um, so yeah, uh, man. Um, my boy Israel Garcia. And the reason the reason I know you're from Socorro is because you have a joke about it. So I, I remember that. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. I did. Yeah, that was actually a new joke that that one that you heard. Man, I'm surprised. I thought maybe it was just like uh, like a saying where you're from. You know, it's just oh, like yeah. like a big inside joke. And I was like, oh, it works. You know. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a it's a real place called Socorro, Texas. For those that don't understand. What Socorro means, uh, Socorro in uh, Spanish means help Texas. Yeah, That's help. My neighborhood is called Help. Help Texas. <laughs> yeah. the, um, so, man, how are things in San Antonio, man? Uh, what, what have you been focusing on? How, what you been keeping busy? How's your life right now? I mean, it's been pretty, it's such a weird, like, it's, it's, it's weird because this is the most I've ever been inside of my house. You know what I mean? The longest where I'm going this time without not going out or doing any. I mean, I, I'm, I've i been doing stand-up like 13 years. So I've been doing it a long time. So I'm used to going out. I still, you know, go to open mics as much as I can. So I, I'm always working on something or going, doing a show, doing something. So for the first time, I'm like, oh, man, like there's nothing. To, I'm just at home and there's nothing to do. And it feels really strange not to have any interaction or or you know going up on stage so it's just been a weird it's just been a weird experience especially because it happened from one day to the next like for me at least i wasn't i guided it i was about to go on tour and i was gonna do all these things i was gonna do some shows with you you know it was gonna be huge for me like and it's so funny that like these these three months especially were gonna be like super huge for like my career right it was like Lo que era, lo que I just said, uh, what was it? Um, uh, January, March, April, May. Those three months were going to be massive for me, man. I was, I was getting approved at the improvs. Um, I was going to be, I was going to do the Hollywood improv. I was going to go on a 48 city tour that got canceled, come back, do the shows with you, and everything got canceled, you know? So it was, it was pretty devastating and it, and it, it, it threw me off, you know. It really did. It threw me off. I didn't think it was gonna get this bad, but it, it did. And um, I'm just—it's weird because you kind of have to figure. Like, I think like for the first like week and a half, I was really bummed out. Like, I was like, ah, oh, like this is uh this was my opportunity. And you know, you go through those things, you know, especially when you're coming up. And um, but then I just after a week and a half, I just you're, if you're, I mean. With comedy, if you're a comedian, you just kind of just find a way out of it. Like, I don't know. I just started to be like, eh, well, and I was like, I started to think of coronavirus like a, like a, like a ratchet ex-girlfriend that you have. Ah, you know I mean? otra vez la pinche corona. Otra vez. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. So I, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do a sketch. So without even thinking, my mind and my body just adapted. And I created a sketch called Rona Corona. And it's like this this ratchet ass bitch or girlfriend, you know, that comes up like, no foo foo, like, don't touch my man six feet apart, please. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I did this sketch and I got a lot of people that liked it. And I just started being like, hey, well, I, you know, doing stand up is one thing, but there's other ways you can be yourself and be creative and, and, and you know, express yourself. So that's one thing that I, that, that's been helping me a lot. And it's taught me a lot to be like, oh, wow, there's, there's so many different forms of, for you to, you know, to, to, to express yourself and still be funny and still be doing what you're doing, you know? Yeah, man. This is what we call taking an L. Um, it, it, it's called like, man, ups and downs. You know, I've been, I've been an independent artist 
um, a little bit longer than you've been doing a stand up. Um, yeah. It's this, so like I'm very familiar with losses. I'm familiar with ups and downs. I'm familiar. I'm familiar with like, well, I'm familiar with like uncertainty in your industry. Like, oh, yeah. music business. Uh oh, we see the MP3 yeah. come in. Let's see what that does. Oh. You know, wait a minute, there's this new development called the ringtone. That might be a thing. You know, yeah. you can get out wow. the you know, that get out the game retire or something like or you could you know, that could be a game changer and then it's like, Oh, the new iPhone came out, no one wants ringtones anymore and you're just like constantly having to roll with the punches and um it, it's definitely a gut check, you know, for a lot of people. It's definitely like I mean, I could relate, dude. I had my own tour, you know. That, yeah, I know. That, yeah. You know, that I didn't foresee anything shutting yeah. it down 100%. Yeah. Like, even if there was a uh, one governor, you know, or one uh, bad uh, weather in one city or one state, like, you just, okay, well, one's canceled or one might be postponed. But yeah. there's America's big. And just because something's happening in, you know, Oregon doesn't mean it's going to affect yeah. your, your Miami dates. So, yeah. um, so yeah, dude, it's it's a it's a wake up call, and it could be a blessing in disguise. Like, like when it you, really is. yeah, like when you said this was supposed to be big for my career. Well, it probably still can be. You know, it just depends with like what you pull out of out of the hat. <laughs> you know, these next few weeks. No, you're absolutely right, and that's why I think like it's like yeah, exactly. I do look at it like now as time passes, I am looking at like a blessing in disguise because. Um, I'm a stand-up comic. I've always done stand-up over anything. You know, I've always just been traditional stand-up. And um, I have sketches. I have actually, actually I have a lot of sketches, but I, they're all sporadic through my comedy career. You know what I mean? And and this, through this, it, it did become a blessing because it started to work different types of muscles in my comedy, you know, body. You know, I started to be like, oh, well, I could... You know, I'm learning software that I didn't knew that, that I didn't knew that I needed that I could use, and um, different types of styles that I can, uh, you know. I have, now I have a live a live a live cast that I go live on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. and um, just little things like that that I'm like, wow, like so. It's all these. It's just a matter of how you, you take these types of situations. You know, you know, it, it's just what it is. It's just a matter of like take it, just like you said, take the L, then figure it out and get back in the game. You know, you just just keep going yeah you know and that's the thing that i always tell people like you know um i know there's a lot and we're all going through it it's not just me it's not just you it's, it's everybody you know so i always just encourage people to be extremely optimistic you know mm -hmm. and, and 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 find your way out of it you know because you can you can make it out of anything you know everybody can so yeah uh amen brother that that's all i've been preaching is like you you have to it's going to be a 24 hour job, just mitigating your stress, making sure you have the right mindset and just being disciplined. And, and really, it really is like mental jujitsu because you're having to stay calm, you know, be the husband, be the dad, be the leader, um, have some answers, have some solutions, even though you're getting limited information and, you know, you don't know who to believe and what the hell, when is, when is the shit going to open back up? When it opens back up, how are you know, like I'm going to keep an eye on restaurants and nightclubs because that's like the closest thing to, you know, comedy clubs. So, yeah. you know, we start seeing there's going to be a few comics that are going to like go first. Like, all right, we're it just opened up and I have a show. Let's see how this goes. Let's see how yeah. let's see how people react. You know, what kind of what's the tone? What's the mood? Um, yeah, I was even talking about getting one of those little like forehead fever checker things. Oh, that's fun! <laughs> and and like oh, yeah. yeah, like even put little hand sanitizers with my logo like on the tables. Um, I, I just ordered. I have a homie in San Antonio. Uh, he's got. I think his wife is. Uh, she's like a scientist, like chemist or something. But they deal with chemicals. And he's like, "Yo, I'm slanging gallons." He's like, "Man, I got a 55 gallon drum," <laughs> and, and and I'm like, "Yo." So anyway, I'm gonna get a couple gallons from him. And I'm yeah. I'm gonna make the sanitizers, but you know to have at the shows just to kind of address the uh, the the uh, elephant in the room, but also make people feel comfortable so that even the clubs can say like, hey, Ching on his team, they really provided, they really brainstormed, they really tried to provide ways of how the fans could feel comfortable and 
you know, and, maybe. And I think that um, I th- I think that'd be a great idea. I think that'd be super awesome, especially because like, you put on such a great show, you know. And I I it, it sucks that you're not able to do it. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I got to see you actually perform. Because I've known about you for a long time. You know, I I I mean I I'm a I've been a fan of yours for a long time. So I, I just had never seen you do stand up. Like mm. I had never seen it before, and I got a chance to see you recently. What, when was that? Maybe like maybe San Antonio last. Yeah, it was the San Antonio one. It was like end of the, the year. Most recent one, I think. I think it was a Sunday uh, show. Yeah, it was like October. I think it was like Halloween weekend or something. Yeah, and I got to I got to see you perform, and um, I saw you do your entire set, and I thought it was great, man. Thank you, bro. I. That was such a great. I thought it was such a great show because it, it was. Re- it's really person, like really personal. Uh-huh. You know what I mean. And I think the best comedy comes out of real personal, like experiences, and and the jokes were really funny, and and the you sold it out. It was super packed, um, and that was a Sunday. Yeah, you know? thank so you, man. I, I thought it was really good, and I can't wait to. Um, I can't wait to see you back on the road. You know, pushing that 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 material out because. People need humor right now, man, more than ever. You know? Yeah, yeah. We just have to find new ways to give it to them. So uh, you were telling me, you were telling me the other day that um, you had invested in some merch. So you know, when things clear back up, and uh, I know we had a few cities scheduled to do with you to have you on our show. Um, yeah. You know, because we we first heard of you through Javi Luna. Javi Luna, oh. I, I think, referred you. And oh. um, anyway. He was like, yeah, he was, uh, I know him from the, uh, what is the thing with Mike? What is it called? Latino Jam? Oh, the Latin Comedy Jam. Yeah, the Latin Comedy Jam. Yeah. He says uh, you toured with them, uh, which which is interesting be- because. Garcia, uh, no? that, that was Jerry Garcia. Oh, you're right. Yeah, it was Jerry. Yeah, I, I think I had, I think I heard of you through Javi as well. But Jerry, oh, okay. Jerry was the main one that made the connection uh, because yeah. Jerry was working with you, and that's how I, I bumped into you here and there. Uh, yeah. But but anyway, we saw you <clears throat> open up for Jerry in a, a tiny room out here. Yeah. Was and uh, and man, you like murdered it. Uh, we were oh, we thanks, were very man. yeah we were very impressed. And um, my very wife, nice. my wife is a harsh critic. She she's like the Latina Mitzi Shore. Um, <laughs> Yeah, she That's always awesome. she's yeah. always like sitting back watching comics, like, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, the sweater thing. That I like you know what I mean? Uh, uh, or whatever. But but yeah, you, you were animated, um uh, you know, physical and uh just engaged the crowd, like the way you your cadence, your delivery, uh you were com- you had comfortable up there, you bringing it back, like you just had full command of, of your material yeah. and you were just hitting them from different yeah. angles and um you know, I, I kind of, I didn't know if you were there when I went up. I think Jerry had told me that you were probably going to show up or something or that you were thinking about showing up. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think I saw you till I, when I got off the stage. Because you know how there's a door and then the green room's connected directly to the stage. I opened the door and I just saw you and I was like, oh shit, fucking chingo okay. you know what I mean? Oh yeah, because I, uh, I think I went on after you, I think. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. uh-huh. Um, but it, that was a great show, man. I had so much fun. I, it's because the thing with me is, I when when I'm up on that stage, I I have like I I I take advantage of all the whole stage. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I look at everything as I like we're walking around. I want to go to this side. I want to go to that side. You know, and I want to see what's going on. You know, what's going on with the crowd? Like make fun of the room a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, just it's. Break any type of barrier or glass or wall that you think is there between you and the audience. Mm-hmm. I break it completely. Mm-hmm. I have to, I have to be completely broken. Once you can break that, then the audience is just they're 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 you know they're part of you now. Now they're just with you. Yeah. You know. And I try to do it real quick. Yeah. I think like the first you know five. I think the most crucial time for stand-ups, I think, is like the first three to five minutes. You know what I mean? You where you really gotta work them, work them, work them, work them, work them. Once you're able to work them and they're with you, 
they're going to be with you the entire time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're going to be patient and they're going to sit through and they're going to pay attention. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I do love it, you oh. know. Like, you know, you, then at that point, you could do whatever, you could basically do whatever you want and they're along for it. You know, I started making fun of, like, I made fun of some guy for looking like he was like this big dude and he looked like a character from uh, Game of Thrones or something like that. So I called the guy from Game of Thrones. <laughs> And um, oh, there at that night, yeah, yeah, that night. And uh, but you just kind of go and you do that like that. And I, and I am just really high energetic and physical as it is. Like when I have a joke, I want it, like I'll write a joke, I'll have a premise or something, you know what I mean? And I'll write it down. And I want this joke to be so like, I want you to know exactly what I see in my head, like what's coming out of my mind. So I use whatever I have as a tool. Because a lot of people don't realize, like, or a lot of comics sometimes don't know, like, it's just a stool and a, and a microphone is all we got, you know. But that's a lot of stuff to me. It's like that microphone could be a rope, that could be a tape, that could be a, a any anything, yeah, yeah. you know. Your body, you have tools. Your body's a tool, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. So when I have this new joke where I I'm talking about going to car wash with my dad, I wonder if you, I don't know if I did that one. Uh, that's also a new joke. I uh, I think yeah I have big. The one where I used I used the microphone stand like the car wash things like those old school ones. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I rubbed them I rubbed the microphone with my shirt so it sounds like a brush. Yeah, 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 you yeah. Know? yeah. It's all visual and, and people are just like, what is like they're seeing exactly what I'm trying to tell them, you know? So I, I use more than my words. I use my, my body mm-hmm. as a tool to deliver my joke, you know. And mm-hmm. I think people engage with that and you get more you get a lot of their attention from that you know they stay stuck on you like where is this guy going with this stuff you know so that's always been my style to just be like i gotta deliver this joke as best as i can you know and yeah. help you see it how i see it you know <clears throat> well well i i need to uh, uh let me recap some of that because i need to memorize it because uh i'm learning here so uh oh, yeah. so number one break the fourth wall because that really draws them in uh, I think that's yeah. a that's a great like live theater like acting technique. Another thing yeah. too that you touched upon is like um, uh, is basically you're you're having to communicate an idea. You're communicating the joke. So all your tools from the 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 mic, the stool, yeah. the stage, roasting the room, roasting the person, yeah. your body's Bang. part. You're the Bang. instrument. You know your voice is part of your instrument, and you're and humans are visual. So you were saying like yeah. you know. Using the, the 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 brush and the thing and acting things out and 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 really bringing them in, um, yes. It, it uh, you know, humans are visual. So yeah. if we're seeing something and, and this person's communicating in a, a captivating way, uh, yes. you're gonna get your point across. <laughs> you will, and that's how you deliver a great joke. At least, at least for me, again, there's 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 comics that'll just stand there with a mic and they murder it. Yeah, they're great writers. You know what I mean. I try to balance everything out. I try to be to where my jokes are solid, but I also have the balance with the physical and the energy, you know, because sometimes you could be really physical and energy, but your jokes are really weak, you know, so you can't depend. It's a balance, you know, it's got to be fair. You got to be a good writer as well as a good, um, as, as well as a good uh, performer, you know, so it's a, it's a equal balance, you know. Yeah. And, and you're right. If you look at it, everything is visual. Everything's like people, you know, that's why I have that show on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. where I, I got, I was like, well, what can I do? Because everybody's like, well, you need to start going live and then interview, uh, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. And then bro, I was all like, well, if I do something like that, I'm like, I want to be able to do something a little bit more unique, you know? So I woke up like at four. I'm not even lying, man. I woke up. I wasn't even thinking. I was like, I don't know. If it comes to me, I'll do it. If it feels good, if I, if I believe that this is a good idea, I'll run with it. But it hadn't come to me. So I was asleep. At four in the morning, and I wasn't even thinking about it. At four in the morning, I just woke up, and like a voice, I swear it was the voice from somewhere else. I don't know. It just said, buy a spinning wheel. And I was all like, what? At that point, my gigs were already canceled. I invested all my savings into uh, my merch. So I had I had $80 in my fucking bank mm. account, man. Mm. The spinning wheel was $50. Oh, my God. And I just was like four in the morning. I'm like, what? Like, what is what is this spinning wheel? And I was like, okay. well, I was like, you know what? And I trusted my little instincts, you know, and I bought the spinning wheel, right? 
So now I do this show on Tuesdays where I spin the wheel and people have been donating money into my account. So I made all my money plus more money. So, and so, now I'm getting followers from it. So you uh, you shout out your cash app or what are you giving them so they could tip you? Uh, I pretty much just put my um, – I put everything as one bad comment. So anything, I always put like Cash App, Venmo. That's why I got the, that OBS software, so I'm going to be able to do it while I'm live. And it's just going to be constantly, you know, showing, you know, anything I want to promote is going to be on the screen as I'm live, mm -hmm. live, live streaming. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that's pretty much how that happened. And I was just like, wow. And and, and a, a lot of people, I feel like they're, they're starting to, I'm getting messages from people from, Oklahoma, Colorado that have just like found like they've landed on my page and they're like, Oh my god, this is so funny. Like you spin this wheel visual. Yeah. They see me spin a wheel, then I do whatever challenges land on the thing. What what, what kind of what kind of challenges do you put on the wheel? <laughs> uh, oh man. Well, they're not too I mean, there are some hardcore ones. So I have like stuff like um so, so I have one that I don't wanna ever do again. I did one um, last week or the week before that. Well, actually, the first the first episode we did, um, I I was like, let's put some peppers in there, you know. And I, I don't know, I'm Mexican, I'm Raza, dude. I'm like, I just peppers, eh, whatever. I fucking peppers in the morning with my egg. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Not, not real peppers, you know what I mean? So I bought these on Amazon. They're called the um, the Carolina Reapers. Have oh. you ever heard of those? Yeah, I've heard of them. <laughs> I I had I didn't know. I was just like, ah, whatever, just get those peppers, right? So I bought six peppers. And I was like, what are the odds? Because the, the, it's a big wheel, right? And it's got 17, uh, 14 slots. <laughs> so I was like, I know my miss. What are the odds that it's going to land on the pepper? Like, I mean, I'll probably land on it every once every, you know. <laughs> Fuck me, whatever. The first motherfucking day that we do this, Carolina. the first the first spinning wheel that I landed on the fucking Carolina Reaper, man. And you had and to eat the whole thing? Yes. So I was like, I'm going to eat the whole thing. And, and I was like, I still was not aware, you know, of what this was, right? I was like, es un pinche chile, wey, pues que pedo, wey, I'll survive it, right? So I fucking eat the, I'm like, God, me di dos chingazos, dos mordiotas. They're like, I'm like, vámonos, se acabó. Within like, 10 seconds i started just be like oh, okay this is, this is bad you know what i mean like my mouth just started to just start like heating up and heating up and heating then the fucking mocos and then the sweating and i'm all like oh my god like then it got bad and then but, but it got really bad but it was like i was i was expecting this you know what i mean i was like ah pues it's como un chile si, si pico si dolió right so after a while, we kept doing the episode, and it went away, kind of went away. And then we got all these people that were watching live. I got up to like like 70, 80 people on my page, and I was all like, yeah. But, so we're all celebrating after the show. Yeah, it's all, we're all drinking beers. Like, yeah, we did it. Oh, my dude. And then so like an hour and a half after the show, after I ate the pepper, is when it really like – I'm like sitting down, right? And then I just go, se me sale como un pedito, and I was like, like, ala, like, just, un pedito chiquito, pero como que quemó, you know what I mean? Salió, salió con nombre pedito, dude. So I fucking, like, I was like, ooh, I just, ooh, that was a little, whoa. Like, I was like, maybe I should, you know, maybe I go to the restroom, maybe, like, I, I felt a little thing, you know? So I fucking go to the restroom, right? I sit down, dude, and that's when it got really bad, man. Like, I was praying to the, I was praying to God and Jesus Christ. Like, I was like, please, God, like, fuck, come and sit in the morning. Dude, I'm like, God. Like, I swear, I'm not even fucking lying to you, but I swear, it was the most excruciating pain I have ever felt in, in a very, 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 very long, like in years. Because, it wasn't even the ass part because that, that it was coming out. You know what I mean? And but what really started to hurt was like the I, I don't I guess the pepper itself. I started feeling it like slowly, like mm. like oh. the big chunks of it. You know what I mean? Oh so man! It's like some of my favorite. Like I don't know if, when you eat a, pe a pepper like that, it's so hot. It's so 
like the pepper is so hot. It has so much acid in it, right? It like you, it 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 feels like you're getting a cramp in your intestines. Like they're just squeezing you, like ah, you know what I mean? So I was all like, ah, like I had the worst cramp. I was this close to you from calling a fucking ambulance, dude. I was like, like no tengo seguridad, pero vengan por mí. I need you guys to come for me. I swear I'm not lying. Then I got up. Then I started throwing up. What? Like I was throwing up with acid. Oh. Uh, it was pink. It was like a good 45 minute brutal experience wake up call as to what a like a reaper really does. Well, you know. Let, let me ask you this, man. Did it have a whole bunch of seeds in it? Yes. Okay. Uh. Well, for one, that acid feeling was probably like the the oil, like the uh. I forget how they measure. Obviously, Carolina Green, whatever Reaper, whatever the fuck, it obviously yeah. has a high uh, the level. I think it's called skate. It's some word, scope pain, some shit. Yeah, it's how they measure the, the different chiles, right? So that's what that one and uh, the ghost pepper, and there's like a couple other one like Scotch Bonnet that are like really hot. But anyway, um, I wonder if maybe you had um some kind of like little tear or irritation, like ulcer or just something to where the chile was rubbing on a part. That 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 like, I, I I can't imagine what that pain felt like, bro. But I can only imagine that if you were willing to call the ambulance and you were in ex- excruciating. <laughs> was, you know, and then I was, you know, what the shitty part I was like, I'm gonna be that guy that dies, right? And it's gonna be like on Yahoo News, like challenge went wrong with this fucking it. It's just a picture of me off like, like that. That that was what really was bothering me at that. I was like, I don't mind. I just don't want to be that comedian that like where everybody's like, you pendejo. <laughs> <laughs> the comments like you you're all dead and they they so beach, you know. And then you know what the funny part was? So I spun the wheel that happened to me, right? I have a friend of mine who's like my co host named Drew. Um and he's a little short, chubby guy, you know what I mean? And then so I spun mine, I ate mine, he goes next, he spins his wheel. He lands on the fucking ghost pepper too. Oh. His first try, dude. So the first two tries, we both landed on the fucking reaper, man. So he ate his, but I don't know. I say we both like he didn't le pasó nada. Like so, I don't know. Maybe afterwards he's still eating hot wings and shit. I'm like, no, man, me estoy pues que pichi los gorditos se aguantan. Maybe he, uh, maybe he chewed his up better to where none of the seeds got stuck. And maybe, and maybe, uh, who knows, brother? You might have stumbled across like you might have a little irritation, like, or there yeah, might, or there might be I, like some food you're allergic to that that you might need to like. That's what I think. I think I was allergic because like my face, like parts of my face were getting red. Yeah, dude. It, it sounds like it was stuck in an area where it was kind of like your body was ringing all the alarms. Like, hey, dude, yeah. uh, we that's already. What it was. It was ringing alarms all over the place. I didn't know I had alarm. I didn't know I had an alarm in my colon, but there was definitely an alarm going off down there. Yo, dude, uh, that, that was such a funny story. Uh, uh, I'll pay to see that on stage live uh, as soon as this is over. <laughs> yeah, I never thought about. It. I, might, I might write something. No, up. it's 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 it, uh, it's very funny. I, I do a I do a live show. I bought a spin wheel. What are the chances of the Reaper? And then yeah. you're about with it. And then you were thinking like, man. I don't want to be that guy on the headlines of yeah. Google. Like, was so this was comedian Israel Garcia right before he right before he died from this stupid challenge. <laughs> it's like, what's up, guys? Fuck it, spin the wheel. Yeah, spin the wheel. Spin the wheel challenge, John Rock. Yo, so let them know where they can uh, watch your Tuesday night show and find you on social media. Yeah, you guys, everybody can find me. Uh, just look up one bad comic anywhere. Um, Everything's one bad comic. My Instagram's one bad comic. My fan page is also one bad comic. Um, all my social handles are are uh, are one bad comic. Um, I also have my website onebadcomic.com. So that's kind of I uh, try to update my my uh, my dates there as much as possible. But yeah, pretty much anything that has one bad comic, you guys will find me. Uh, uh, Snapchat, all that stuff is is all one bad comic. I try to just keep it. You know what I mean? One one name. Ladies and gentlemen, Israel Garcia, thanks for joining us, brother, and we'll talk to you soon, man. Thank you very much. We appreciate it, brother. You take care, man. Good talking. All right, dog. Peace. Let me uh, press stop record.